So let's tie all of the knowledge together in a so, somewhat more of a multi-step uh, complicated example here. So here's an example question. If 5.50 moles of calcium carbide reacts with an excess amount of water, let me just kind of bring up my pen here. How much, how many moles of acetylene gas, which is a gas used in welding, will be produced? So there's a lot of different things here, and you're not given the um, the actual reaction. You know that number one, you're given in moles, and you have calcium carbide, which you know that uh, that's a formula, and reacts with an excess amount of water. So if you watch the limiting reagents and in excess, you know that this excess water. Uh, tells you that the water is in excess, so this one is not going to determine your product, uh, which means that calcium carbide will be your limiting reagent because this one will be the one that's limiting. That's This is the one that's going to be determining because it does not say excess. The water here, however, is the excess. And then now you're going to be ha looking for how many moles of saline gas will be produced. And you know that this is a double displacement reaction. So first off, let's try to figure out what the reaction looks like. Uh, let's write uh, calcium carbide, which is your CaC2. This is going to be reacting with water. And this is going to be a double displacement reaction. So you know that your Ca and C2 are going to be switched with um, hydrogen uh, water molecule. And how I like to look at um, water molecule is that it's going to look like this in a way. So then you can sort of separate that H is going to be your positive side and hydroxide is going to be your negative side. So if we were to look at this calcium carbide, you know that calcium has a plus two charge. This is going to be combining, with, this is going to be switching places with, with the hydrogens, right? Because your two positives will switch. So what's going to happen is that this calcium is now going to be combining with your hydroxide. And because hydroxides are all minus one, you need two of these hydroxides to combine with one Ca plus two. And what you're going to be left with is that you're going to have C2 and then combining with uh, the hydrogen. Luckily, your acetylene gas is going to be the product, so you know that this is going to be your product here, C2H2. So you don't even have to determine what kind of kind of uh, chemical formula it will be. You know that C2H2. The next step here is that you have to, so the first skill that we have to do is that we have to write out uh, this chemical reaction. Second skill now we have to know is that you need to know how to balance. So let's uh, balance this, this out. So my carbons, I have two here, two carbons here, one calcium, one calcium. I have two waters here, uh, two H. Uh, H is here, so I think I need to double this. Let's double this. So now I have four hydrogens on this side. Uh, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens. Now this is all balanced. So my molar ratio is that I have one calcium carbide, two waters, and one calcium hydroxide, and one acetylene gas. So the second skill is balancing your chemical reaction. So the next part is that I'm starting off with 5.50 moles of calcium carbide. This is what I'm trying to, what I'm given. And I'm reacting with this, this is my excess. So again, from my limiting reagent and excess video, the excess is not going to determine your product. So you don't even need to uh, take this into consideration. So whenever you see excess, it's not this is going to, you don't need to figure out which one is limiting. You already know because this is excess, the other one has to be the limiting reagent. So my calcium carbide is the one that's going to determine the number or the amount of um, acetylene gas that I need. So here, uh, we're already given in moles. We need to find the moles of saline gas. Do I need any molar conversions? Do I need to convert this into grams, liters, or particles? No, I don't, right? Because this is already given, uh, it's already given in moles. So what I need to do is I just need to use stoichiometry. I need to use the molar coefficients. So 5.50 of my calcium carbide gas. This is, I'm going to do my calcium uh, uh, times division bar setup. And this is going to be my moles of calcium carbide in the bottom because I need to get rid of this. I need my moles of my acetylene gas, my C2H2 at the top because that's one to one. Now I need to fill in my molar co uh, coefficients. So that's one to one uh, ratio. So then my moles of calcium carbide gets canceled and I have 5.50 moles of C2H2 that is produced with 
5.5 of my calcium carbide. Again, this is only determined because we know that water is in excess. So we know that this has to be my limiting reagent. And because this is my limiting reagent, this is going to be the one that determines how much acetylene gas that will be produced. Um, another add-on to this, I can figure out how much um, in grams this would be. I can figure out how many molecules this would be. And I can also figure out how much volume this would be since this is my gas. And if I were to extend this even more, well, instead of starting from moles, I can start off from grams. I can start this off with molecules. And um, I can't start this off with volume because this is not my gas, right? So in order, if I were to be given uh, grams, I need to convert this to moles, convert this to moles, then mole to mole. Then once you have moles, then you can convert all the other stuff, right? Just like my previous sort of a uh, diagram of uh, this one, right? So this is how you want to tie everything together. Uh, for this example, we need to know the types of reactions. You need to know how to balance these charges to make you have the proper compound. And then you need to use stoichiometry. You need to use molar conversion. That's all of this unit in a nutshell, is that all those little skills come back and to help you figure out these big sort of uh, real life um, questions, right? Because then you can, you can figure out how much stuff you can make with a given amount. So that's your um, tying all of those concepts together. Hopefully this example has helped you. Thanks for watching.